How does exactly I obtain such a result? Let's consider the blue area as the region where the particles can move around. Let's divide this blue area into different sections. In this example, I divide it into 25 small squares. So I have 5 squares horizontally and 5 squares vertically. Before all the particles are set on screen, I store in the memory a lot of matrices with useful information for the simulation. For example, let's consider the matrix associated with the square up here. The matrix contains the distances between the section considered and every other section present. The distance is measured in square units, so it tells us how many squares away we are from the one selected. The first number is a zero, because the distance between a point and itself is just zero. In the first row, we find 1, 2, 3 and 4, because we are respectively at 1, 2, 3 and 4 squares apart from the top left section. The same can be said for the fourth column. What about the distance with the box right here? We must use the famous Pythagoras theorem. The distance can be calculated as the square root of the horizontal distance square plus the vertical distance square. By substituting into the formula the right numbers, we obtain the square root of 2, that is approximately 1.41, as shown. By repeating this process, we can compile all the cell of the matrix. Then we move to the next square and we calculate again all the distance from this new area. This is done from every area on the screen. We can see that because wherever I click, the proper matrix will appear. The force that I want between the particle in this simulation is the gravitational one. Nothing about general relativity. I will use the good old Newton law. The force between two particles is directly proportional to the product of the mass and inverse proportional to their square distance. In vectorial notation, the formula is slightly modified to include the direction of the force. What is special about this simulation, which allows it to be very fast, is to compute previously the force term based on the matrix shown and adapt this term thanks to the number of particles in each section. Let's see a concrete example. Before of that, the sponsor of this video, my Instagram page. If you like my video and you want to see extra stuff or projects, you must definitely check it out. Link in the description. Thanks to the sponsor, I had time to modify the matrix program. The new matrices contain the cubic inverse distance between the section selected and all the other sections. Let's insert the particles to the program to understand how this element can be helpful. The particles are generated randomly and they could appear in any of the 25 squares. In this case, the first particle is here and the second one is here. The red sections are very important because they filter out the wanted element from the useless ones. What is the force felt by the force particle. Let's click on the area where it is located to find it out. From all the numbers that appear, only the red ones are important. So let's cancel all the others. Two terms will contribute to the force in this instance. One is zero because it's the term between the particle and itself. The other is a force towards the other particle section with this 0.08 factor. We can see that uh, by clicking on the other area, the same force will be present, but in the opposite direction. When I start the simulation, I see that the two particles will go exactly in the direction calculated. The more cells we had, the more the solution will approach the real one. Let's focus on another example. Here we have five particles but three of them are in the same area. This means that the force felt by this particle up here towards the central region must be three times 0.04. There is another weak force towards the down region thanks to the presence of the last particle. The total force will be the sum of these two. This is the theory, but what about the real simulation?
there is a particle that does not move on the screen. Can you figure out where it is? It's down here. In the description you can find a link for the script I used, in case you want to replicate the simulation. Computer science always surpasses my imagination.